Hi team, welcome to another installment of the How Do I series, this time episode one of MapKit. In this video, I'm gonna show a few examples of some of the features that a number of you have requested that you wanted to learn how to do or get some examples to do. In the process of building these examples, I've actually upgraded the original template for the app that I gave you that we used in class and uh, there are a couple reasons for it that I'll highlight shortly. But if you are able to make these changes to your app or take your app idea and put it into this template, you're gonna find that you get a lot more uh, functionality and it's gonna, going to make it easier to kind of build the ideas that you have for the MapKit project. Let me walk you through some of those changes. The first change is this settings.swift file. And so I've added this to take advantage of some features that are built into the newest version of iOS and macOS. These changes make it so that any element of my app that depends on current location is going to get an update automatically when the value of current location changes. So you can currently see that current location is the first element of my list. And so anything that depends on that is going to get an automatic update if I change the current location from one list item to the next, there's going to be an automatic update of anything that depends on that location in my app. I have made some changes to the individual Swift UI elements. For example, I've added a center property to the map view, and I've added another piece down here to make it so that that works. And I've also made some changes to the main app template. So you'll notice that I have this state object where I am creating one of these settings objects that I'm gonna use within my app. A few other little things like setting this environment object and adding this environment object to any of my Swift UI elements that are going to need access to it. Enough of that, let's, let's go through uh, what this does. As usual, you wanna disable results when you run the code. So this looks a lot like the previous version. So you can choose different locations in the list, no big deal. So this is exactly the same. But because of those changes that I've added with that app settings object, there's some really cool things I can do. For example, I've added a button that is sort by distance to selected. So let's actually choose Happy Valley as our location here. If I hit this button, it'll actually take all of the locations in the list and sort them in increasing distance to that location of, of Happy Valley right here. So you can see we have Happy Valley, Hung Vong, good pizza restaurant. And so this is automatically updating based on the item that I've selected in the map. This is happening inside this action for the button. And it's just a single command. I'm telling the location list that is stored on settings. That's over here inside settings. You can see I also have a list of locations that is going to automatically update anytime it changes. And so any, anytime I hit that button, it's going to sort that list based on this calculation. This is an interesting function here. Here's what this is doing, and, I'm, and it's, it's a little complicated, but I'll, I'll try my best. So you have a list of items that you can see right here. What this says is for any item that's in that list, that's dollar sign zero, calculate the distance of that item from the current location. The second item in that list, that's dollar sign one. So in this list, it could be good pizza res restaurant is dollar sign zero, and Saigon South International School is dollar sign one. What it then does is it returns a comparison of those two items, which it then uses to sort the list. So it says, return this in such a way that the first item distance is less than the second item distance. It's saying that the distance of the good pizza restaurant from the selected location is going to be less than the distance to Saigon South International School, which is the second item in that list. And so this entire list is going to be sorted so that that is true for every row of that list. So that's the way sorting works. Uh, there are a few other things going on here. Again, I'm not gonna detail them because I want you to be able to take what I'm giving you here and to adapt your application to this one. The second page is similar, 
uh, but some of you asked how you could show a limited number of items in the list based on how far they are from the selection. So this looks very similar. Um, let's choose a location, how about uh, Vivo City? And I want to make it so that when I flip the switch, it only shows me the 10 locations that are closest to that, uh, that selected location of Vivo City. And you can see, I actually, uh, three of you in the class included Vivo City as one of your locations. So you can see that showing up three times, and then we have some other locations that are uh, not far away from it. Now I had to how to return just a few elements of a list based on the number of elements that you want to return. To do this, I used uh, some of the code at that link. It's an extension of the uh, type of array. I'm setting the number of locations that I want to return at 10. And then if that toggle is uh, selected, I'm going to return just the number of locations that I asked for. If it is not selected, I'm going to return the entire list of locations uh, to the user. There's one other thing that I want to show you here, and that is that in the map view, uh, here I have set the width to nil. What that means is that I am not telling my app what the width of my app has to be. And what SwiftUI is going to do with that is it's going to say, make that width as big as it possibly can be. So as I change the size of the app, you see that the width of the map just expands to match the space that it's given. And so that's uh, just one other thing that you might want to do within your app. Last thing, the search bar. So some of you wanted uh, to know how you can make it so you can search. So this is my example for you. Uh, this is the normal list. If you start typing a name, you can see that the list is limited to only those items that match the text that you have typed in. So if I put SSIS, I get a, a limited list. And I'm doing this um, by one variable, which I'm calling search text, which is whatever is typed here. And then I have a property that is called filtered list. And any time search text is not empty, I am filtering my list of locations based on the title of the locations. And so if the title contains the search text, it's going to return only those items. In this one, you can see that inside the map view, I've made the, the width nil and the height nil. So when I select an item, it actually just fills the entire space, both width and height. And so as I make that really big, you can see that's a nice, beautiful map. It automatically updates. So that's it. Those are uh, some examples of things that you can do. I am recommending that you try putting the code that you have written for your project into this new app template. And in a different video, I'll show you how to then move this template into an Xcode project so you can run it on a device. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. See you next time.